So now that we've looked at a couple of different ways that signaling can happen within the endocrine system, we're now going to be looking at more specifics in terms of the structure that's seen within the endocrine system's units. Those messages that are sent by the endocrine system, those signaling molecules have a specific structure. Specifically, we're going to look at the chemical properties that are worth noting. So we'll entitle the next flowchart, Chemical Properties 1, and specifically, we're looking at the chemical properties of signaling molecules. Why are we looking at signaling molecules? Well, that's because the endocrine system involves signaling molecules, and the way that signaling molecules work is directly related to how they are chemically structured. Structure and function, form and function, anatomy and physiology, coming up one more time. So, what we notice about signaling molecules that are found within the endocrine system is that their chemistry gives us different classes of uh, regulators, let's say. So first we're going to talk about the different classes of local regulators, which are simply, again, things that are going to regulate, that are going to be in control, but specifically in a local orientation. They're not going to be going into the bloodstream most of the time, and they're also not going to be going far distance for that reason. So these local regulators act quickly, and they act locally. And that is going to be a big part of how their chemistry is uh, sort of made up. So let's look at the first class. So we're going to be looking at different classes of local regulators, and the first class would be modified fatty acids. Modified fatty acids. So fatty acid is a chemical structure that has that glycerol head and those fatty acid tails and thus we have a chemical structure to work off of. Remember, fatty acids are going to be mainly composed of hydrocarbons. So they're going to be a bunch of C's and H's on those fatty acid tails. And so um, what we're going to have in a fatty acid structure is uh, essentially these hydrocarbons, and a good example would be prostaglandins. Remember prostaglandins? Well, if you remember, these were autocrine signals, right? Prostaglandins were part of the autocrine side of the flowchart, and thus they are local regulators. They regularly locate blood pressure. Uh, they regular, regularly um, are going to be looking at blood pressure, uh, vasodilation, uh, infl inflammation, many other things that prostaglandins are involved in. They'll be localing those. Uh, they'll, be lo they'll be regulating those locally. So that's our first class. Next class would be the polypeptides. So that's another class of local regulators that have a polypeptide chemical structure. So polypeptides are going to simply be things like cytokines and also growth factors. But guess what? These are going to be covered in later lectures. So right now, just remember, these are two examples of polypeptide class of local regulators that are signaling molecules. And their chemical property is what again? That they are polypeptides. They are consist con composed of amino acids connected via peptide bonds into a polypeptide orientation. And then finally, the last class of local regulators that is the most important to understand is the gases. Class is equal to gases. So, if you remember, local regulators have to go short distances, and usually go short distances via diffusion mechanism. They can easily diffuse through the cell because the cell is very nearby. They don't need to go into the blood. So, the gases are the same way. Remember, gases were one of those things that were small enough to simply diffuse through the plasma membrane when we talked about membranes and transport in Bio 1. So, a good example to understand how gases function as local regu regulators is nitric oxide. So, let's write this down as example nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is commonly abbreviated as NO. Sometimes people mis, uh, call this nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is N2O, and that's what's used in uh, very fast street race cars as NOS, as some people call it. This is different. Nitric oxide is not NOS, not seen in Fast and the Furious. This is something within our body called nitric oxide. So don't confuse this for nitrous oxide. Two different gases here. So we have nitric oxide. Now, the way to understand how nitric oxide works, the way to understand how a gas would work as a local regulator, because the gas is the specific chemical that we're looking at, its property functions uh, allows for these following steps, let's say. 
First, let's say nitric oxide is available, okay? But nitric oxide has to act in response to something. There has to be a stimulus, remember? So in order for a stimulus to be present, we're going to first state that the blood oxygen levels, O2, decreases. That's essentially our uh, stimulus. That's the thing that fluctuates, and the variable is blood O2. And because of this fluctuation of decrease, we have to respond to this. And the response will be in the following manner. The second step of the nitric oxide mechanism of local regulation would be to have the endothelial cells. So endothelial cells are just cells that line something. They're called endo for that reason. They're lining cells of blood vessels. So the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels so let's write that down as blood vessels, uh, release nitric oxide. That's the response right there. Release nitric oxide, and that's essentially the signaling molecule. Let's not forget that. Because we're looking at the chemical properties of signaling molecules. What's the signaling molecule? Nitric oxide. What's its chemical property? This is a gas. Okay, so our endothelial cells, you would consider them then the detectors, and the detectors will then have a certain response. Therefore, that response is releasing nitric oxide. Blood O2 degreases. Endothelial cells, says, uh, endothelial cells say, oh, this is kind of weird. Let's release nitric oxide. Step three. Once you have nitric oxide being released, the nitric oxide, NO for short, diffuses. Why does it diffuse? Well, that's because its chemical structure allows it to. It is a gas. It can easily diffuse through plasma membranes. So the nitric oxide diffuses into the surrounding, we'll say for right now, just the surrounding. Why surrounding? Well, it's a local regulator. It's not going to go too far. Nitric oxide diffuses into surrounding smooth muscle. Okay, so that's basically where you would imagine our target cell is. Our target cell is at a smooth muscle cell. So let's write that down as TC in parentheses so we don't forget. So once we have nitric oxide within this smooth muscle uh, a fusion of cells, we're then going to have step four. Nitric oxide will induce something. It will cause a response. And what's going to happen within the smooth muscles is that an enzyme will be activated. So smooth muscle enzyme is activated. Why is it activated? It was activated because there is the presence of nitric oxide. We don't need to know the specifics of what enzyme is activated. Just know that the activation was because the nitric oxide concentration increased. Remember, enzymes need a very specific environment. What is the specific environment for activation here? To have more nitric oxide in the surrounding area. Why was there more nitric oxide? Well, that's because our initial stimulus said blood O2 is low. Let's release some nitric oxide. Let's let it fuse through. And now the smooth muscle is going to respond by activating the enzyme within it. This is going to cause the following. This will cause, because the enzyme is working now, because it's been activated by nitric oxide, the smooth muscle then relaxes. Okay, what big deal. Remember, our goal is to do what? If our initial stimulus was blood O2 decreases, our goal is to increase blood O2. Let's see if we're on the right track. Smooth muscle relaxes. This is going to uh, directly involve step six, which would be muscle relaxation. Muscle relaxation, even though we haven't talked about the skeletal muscular system just yet, this induces the following uh, scenario. It's called the vasodilation. The moment you have muscle relaxation, you will subsequently have something called vaso, which means vessel essentially, dilation, opening of vessels. What we specifically mean by vasodilation, therefore, is that there's going to be more blood flow. More blood flow to whatever tissues need it because the vessels, the blood vessels, are opening more. And if you have a very tiny blood vessel, it only allows a very tiny amount of blood to flow through. But let's say we undergo vasodilation. We dilate this blood vessel. Look how much more blood can fill within this blood vessel. There's a lot more blood there, thus we have more blood flow. That blood flow will be to the tissues, and because blood carries oxygen in it, guess what we also have? We have more oxygen. Look at our first step, blood O2 decreases. What are we going to do here? Blood Blood O2 essentially increases because of more blood flow. This is again because of dilated blood vessels. Let's not forget that. Dilated BVs for short, blood vessels. This is essentially the mechanism 
of a very important pharmaceutical discovery, which would be Viagra. There we go. So this is actually how this, this pill works. It essentially is going to be prolonging the activity of the nitric oxide pathway. So let's write that down. Prolongs activity of the nitric oxide pathway. And this drug was actually originally being developed in order to help heart patients, to help patients who had difficulty with circulation in their heart to sort of vasodilate the cells or the heart muscle, let's say, the heart smooth muscle vessels that are there and allow them to have better circulation within the heart. But little did they know that this actually allowed for a different sort of result, which we don't need to get into the details of, but just know that the nitric oxide pathway is sort of exemplified and further, it goes even further because of the um, specific mechanism that nitric oxide has within these six steps. So this is our stepwise orientation. Basically, I know it's a lot to sort of look at on the outside. Think of it like this. All we have is a stimulus. Notice where the stimulus is. We have a detection of that stimulus. Okay, And then we have a response to that stimulus. And that response is, of course, a local regulation via a signal that's being sent, all because of the chemical property that is a gas. And that covers our first set of local regulators and signaling molecules.